Hey, John Dran here, and today I'm doing a tutorial on making good tutorials. And as funny as that sounds, it's actually really important because there's a lot of tutorials out there for people to choose from, and there's actually a lot of bad tutorials out there as well that never get anywhere, never get any views, nothing. So I'm going to teach you how to make a good tutorial in seven easy steps. Alright, now let's talk about the first point, and this is called taking a relevant video. So what that means is don't don't make a video on some unknown program that nobody ever uses. If it's a good program that there's not many videos for, make it so that you can be the one that people watch. But otherwise, if it's a big program like Vegas or DVD Architect or Photoshop, that's a huge one. And and if you use big programs like that, then even internet programs you can use, then a lot more people will be looking for answers to those things questions so they'll be looking for tutorials like yours so you know b big programs like iTunes and yeah, like I said Photoshop um, if you use big programs like that then people will look for your tutorials if you're using Cyberlink PowerDirect I mean who uses that so try to pick relevant things and so now let's recap alright so we're making tutorials on programs or subjects that people know or have questions about. Some big ones are Vegas, Photoshop, etc. People don't usually need to know about smaller programs, so don't focus all of your attention there. And if you find that not many tutorials are out there for a pr particular program, add your own because it increases the chance of being picked to view by someone that does need to use it. The next big thing is talk. You need to talk in your tutorials and if there's one thing that makes a tutorial horrible it, it's the old classic you know let's come down here and and you, you just use notepad to tell everybody what to do and all of the spelling mistakes rewriting backspacing all of that it's horrible if there's one thing you really don't want to do is use notepad get yourself a mic and talk because a human beings like to hear other human beings talk it, it makes them feel more comfortable, it makes your video more friendly. The other thing is that if you talk, then it's a lot easier for people to follow your instructions rather than having to follow the instructions of a notepad. You usually can say more than you type because you're less um, exact when you're typing, especially if you're trying to type fast. So talk on your tutorials. That's very, very important. That's what will often make or break a tutorial. And so as long as you, I mean, just coming here, Notepad is a big no-no, like huge no-no. Do not use Notepad if you want your tutorials to be quality. And you want to aim to make quality tutorials in order to get more people to watch them. Because oftentimes when you, people are looking for a good tutorial, they'll find one and then just skip five seconds into it because they see notepad and for a couple of other reasons that we're going to cover in a couple of minutes now if you're scared that you don't you don't want to have your real voice on the internet you don't want people to hear you there's a very cool free program called audacity and other ones that are out there that can change your pitch of your voice alright so recapping you need to talk because notepad is horrible you need to get a mic because people like to listen to people they're reassured by humans and they understand instructions better than when given by voice rather than given by notepad and if you're scared of using your real voice there are a variety of free programs like audacity that allow you to change the pitch of your voice for free it's very simple it's, you know click up click down you can make yourself a chipmunk if you want alright the next point I want to make is that you want to move your mouse slowly as you do it because even though you can see your mouse fine and you're used to what you're doing, moving your mouse slowly will make the video much better. It'll make it easier to follow and it'll reduce choppiness. Moving really fast like that will give you a lot of choppy videos. If you want to see one, click right here. Um, not to make this guy bad or anything, but it's a very choppy video. So choppy video equals bad. Now, when you're coming here to do something, try to move your mouse slowly that way people can follow your mouse better and that way they can see what you're doing now there's a couple of trade-offs between how big your screen capture size is and I'll talk about that in the recap so if you're coming over here 
then you want to you want to scroll and you want to you want to keep it all nice and slow so that people can see what you're doing and so that you can actually show them and you know you can use programs like this to change the speed of your mouse and stuff if you're if you're really high tech but mainly you know just take your time and go slowly it will make your video better don't rush all right so Depending on your video recording software, the pan feature can make the video very choppy. Slow down your natural movements. It makes the video easier to follow. If it's too slow, you can use a video editor to speed it up or vice versa. But just try to keep it slow. And select your screen area wisely. Using a smaller screen area will speed up your video and make it choppier. However, it gives you better zoom and you can see better. A bigger area will make less movement or none, sorry about the typo, but the file is bigger and then you can't see what's zoomed in as well.